Now we are going to discuss squamous intraepithelial lesions of cervix or we can say preneoplastic lesions. Squamous intraepithelial lesions or cervical intraepithelial neoplasias it has got previously many classifications which we are going to discuss in this video. Now cervical intraepithelial neoplasia most commonly seen in premenopausal women and after applying acetic acid that is from 3 to 5 percent they are seen as discolored raised plaques and often appear white on colposcopic examination. Now high grade lesions now please let me clarify it that in certain literature or books it is mentioned as H cell so H S I L or H G S I L is one and the same thing. As we are discussing that, the lesions are more commonly seen in premenopausal women and after applying 3 to 5 percent of acetic acid, they appear as discolored, raised, dark, which are white in color at colposcopic examination. High grade lesions, they most often have a mosaic or cobblestone appearance. Numerous risk factors which include early age at which sexual activity starts, number of sexual partners and unprotected sexual activity. Smoking is also a cofactor. More than 90% of the cervical dysplasias are related to human papilloma virus infection. Gross appearances, most often they are flat or papular discolored lesions which may be white or red. Histological features, low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions that is HGSIL or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1. In this case, the nuclear pleomorphism or hyperchromasia involves the lower one-third of the epithelium. Irregular chromatin but inconspicuous nucleoli. There is increased mitotic activity in the lower third of the epithelium. Mostly display human papilloma virus effect. Flat condyloma acuminatum are considered low grade squamous intraepithelial lesions. High grade squamous intraepithelial lesions or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 2 or 3. I told you that uh, we are going to discuss this classification very soon. But the histological features, nuclear pleomorphism and hyperchromasia involving the lower two-third of the entire thickness of the epithelium, irregular nuclear chromatin and inconspicuous nucleoli, high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio and atypical mitotic figures are present. Binucleate and multinucleate cells are often present. Involvement of the underlying endocervical glands may be seen but should not be taken as microinvasive carcinoma. Immunohistochemistry P16 INKA positive MIP1 slash CHI67 index high and other techniques that is PCR for detection of human papilloma virus. Please consider this slide or you can say chart. There is classification of the pre-malignant squamous cervical lesions. First, mild dysplasia involving the lower third of the epithelium also used to be called as SIN1 or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia or now called squamous intraepithelial lesion that is LSIL or LCIL or low grade CIL that is LGSIL. Then moderate dysplasia involving the lower two third of the epithelium also called cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 2 now called high grade CIL or HCIL. Then severe dysplasia involving the entire thickness of the epithelium 
सर्वाइकल इंट्राएपिथीलियल नियोप्लेजिया ग्रेड थ्री और नाउ कॉल्ड हाई ग्रेड स्केमस इंट्रापिथीलियल लियन और एच सेल कार्सनोमा इन साइड टू अगेन सिन थ्री दैट इज सर्वाइकल इंट्रापिथीलियल नियोप्लेजिया ग्रेड थ्री अगेन नाउ इज कॉल्ड हाई ग्रेड सेल दैट इज एच सेल बट इन दिस केस If somebody asks you what is the difference between carcinoma in situ and invasive carcinoma your answer should be in carcinoma in situ the limiting basement membrane is intact this is a photograph which shows microscopic features in which there is normal distribution of the epithelium now this photograph shows normal appearance of epithelium and with it there is sin 1 or we can say l cell or low grade cell in which lower one third of the epithelium shows dysplastic changes or you can say that uh, there is loss of uh, normal pattern of the epithelium in the lower third of the thickness of the epithelium which is marked with blue rectangle now this is the photograph again showing normal appearance of the epithelium or normal lining of the epithelium for comparison with that of the sin 2 that is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade 2 nowadays we call it as h cell high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion the lower two third of the thickness of the epithelium is involved and shows that the architecture is disturbed when compared with a normal photograph on the site and this sin 2 is marked with a red line now this is the third category in which the normal appearance of the epithelium is shown and here you can easily find out there is sin 3 in which the entire thickness of the epithelium is involved and does not show any resemblance to the normal and this is partially encircled by red lines on both sides and these red lines are commencing from the lower surface going up to the upper surface of the epithelium showing that the total architecture when comparing with the normal is lost Now this is the flow chart which shows the natural history of squamous intraepithelial lesions with approximately 2 years follow up you can well see that low squamous intraepithelial lesion they regress in 60% of cases persist in 30% of cases and progress to high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion in 10% of cases whereas high grade squamous intraepithelial lesions regress in 30% of cases persist in 60% of cases and progress to 10% of cases to carcinoma